overall in three and one in the Southwest Conference and we're underway from Rice Stadium and Phillips got all of this kick and Rice will work offensively from the 20 yard line and there's Chad Nelson the quarterback that Gary talked about joining him in the option offense Yancey Edmonds is one of their key players he had over 100 yards two years ago against the a &M club Nelson Whitlock and Gordon they don't throw often Jeff Verhaus is their leading receiver, though. Adriel Askew had a touchdown catch last week. And up front, they said since the freshman, Mike Viator, came in, they've really solidified their front group. Spinner, Thigpen, Torello, and over. Round out the front wall for the Rice offense. First down from the 20-yard line. And on the pitch, Edmonds got outside, got the corner, tiptoe to about the 25-yard line. Run out of bounds there by Datwin for the Texas A&M defense. Brandon Mitchell, a Lombardi semifinalist. Jasper and Williams on the front three. The linebacking core is a good one. They got a lot of speed as always. Reggie Brown's their leading tackler with Holdman. Wynn, who just made the hit, and Mitchell. And in the secondary, Ray Mickens, a little guy, but made in that Aaron Glenn type of mold. They've had some All-Americans in their secondary. Allen McMullen and Williams round out the secondary for Texas A&M. Second down and five from the 25. Edmonds on the move. Man, the first man in, though, is Whitlock, the fullback. Got a couple and brings up a third down and three. And third down and three, I think Kenny Hatfield would take, Gary. Oh, absolutely. In this offense, he knows that he's in his comfort zone. And really, one of the important stats in this football game is how well Rice can handle third down. AM is stopping opponents this year 27% success rate on third down. They have to keep it in this territory of about third and three or four. Actually, this is a little bit long situation for their offense, but Hatfield comfortable coaching this offense, the triple option offense. Officials having a little discussion. Randy Crystal, our referee. Momentary stoppage. Whitlock, the lone man in the Rice backfield. You'll probably see some motion, and there it comes. Big pileup right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing inside. Brandon Mitchell and company stopped that in a hurry. And it was it was with penetration that they stopped at that time. Nelson had no other thing, he, nothing else he could do but hand it to the fullback. And Mitchell was in the backfield. And that's the guy that they're going to have trouble blocking all game. When you watch a lot of tapes, sometimes he's just unblockable. So Phillips will come in to kick, leading the conference at over 43 per. And a dangerous guy back deep is Ray Mickens. 13th in the country with that 12.4 return average. A&M's got all 10 up close. Nice punt. Mickens will backpedal to the 26. Ray Mickens straight up the middle and got to the 40, getting 14 on the return. And so good field position for the Texas A&M offense. Corey Pollock will bring him out. And he is 29-5-1 and one as a starter. That's kind of hard to argue with. Detron Smith, the fullback, and Leland McElroy is the home run hitter. Speaking of home run hitters, their long ball threat, Albert Connell with Sanders, to play as the tight end. And Hunter Goodwin, there's some NFL scouts here tonight looking at him. The tackle that they like, Calvin Collins, Hackrat McKinney, and Ruman round out the front wall for Texas A&M. Corey Pollock, maybe not the prettiest quarterback in the world, Gary, but it's hard to argue with going for your 30th win as a career starter. And R.C. Slocum is trying to retool this offense to be a bit more balanced. And Corey Pollock is trying to get his game up with it just a bit. The numbers on Pollock on the year. First down, Texas A&M from its own 40. Pollock with a blitz. Throws as he's hit, and that one got tipped and almost picked off. Joe Davis got a hand on it. It was Izzo that got the heat on the AM quarterback. Now a dual backfield with Detron Smith, the fullback. He'll lead the way all night for McElroy. And right now, straight up the middle and into Rice territory. A 13-yard pickup for Leland McElroy. He's got a Rice 48-yard line. Sanders in motion. Got a little draw. McElroy and off the right side he's off to the races again give him 11 more another first down explosive is the word you think about if they so choose second and inches and they are going to throw and Pollock does go deep nobody down there trying to get it to his tight end Hayward Clay who says he was held and no flags in the second it's off for the first down on the keeper 
as he got it to the 36-yard line. First down at the 36 of Rice here in the opening quarter, three minutes in from Rice Stadium. McElroy. Ooh. Took a pretty good lick. Jay Laney came up from the secondary, and he got help on five. Seventh play of the opening drive offensively for the Aggies. Draw play, McElroy. He weaves his way, got by a would-be tackler. He's maybe a yard short of the first down, though. Joe Davis, the middle linebacker, made the hit. Well, the Rice Owls... It's another third and short situation. Two tight ends set for a and Pollock pulls up, fires, got a man in single coverage. Nice open field tackle. Aaron Oliver made the catch. He first down, though, at the 23. And hit in the backfield. And it's who else? Izzo is not around the football a lot. There'll be a problem tonight. So far, he has been. Pollock fires outside. Sanders makes the grab and out of bounds. Right outs to the bottom of your screen. Pollock rolls that way. And now he's going to keep it. And he's got the first down. Made a good decision. Saw an opening and took it. And a holding call, legal block. About Sanders, Oliver, and Connell. Rice thinking about a blitz. They'll back out of it. Pollock's going to try to flare it out to McElroy. Made a nice catch, but knocked out of bounds. Case the backup quarterback. This one might drift to the right on him. He missed it. Funny. Second offensive set of the night for the Rice Owls. Nelson keeps it. Faked it to the fullback. Got about three before he swarmed under. He's going to throw. A little bit of a surprise, and he almost had it intercepted. Red season. The crutches third down and seven. And Nelson keeps it and shouldn't have. Pat Williams again. Phillips hangs it up high. Mickens will take it at the 32. Looks for a blocker and does what he can to get about five yards on the return out to the 37-yard line. So AM after the long opening drive that netted them no points, starting at the 37. End around coming. Connell. And he's still on his feet. They call him AC, and he's got some AC and some DC working out there. All the way down to the 44-yard line. 19 yards on the end around. The reverse. And he could have made it to the outside because he was trapped and had nowhere to go. If you stop right here, he's got great position. He should get the support from this side in the field. But nothing happens for him. And Connell's be able to bust it back out to the outside. And that's the junior college transfer who has great speed and is really coming out in this offense for R.C. Slocum. Another one of those 4-3-40 guys. And a and got it to you. And here's another one. He's the fastest guy on the team, McElroy. And he takes it down inside the 40 to the 39. And we take it down to Jerry Punch. For like filet. <laughs> Unless it was walleye. Always enjoyed that. It's a loss. Nice job on penetration. Izzo came in there, got help from Goins. Here comes a blitz. Almost got to pull it. He lays it out and a nice job in the secondary. Jeff Souls. Two. Izzo's coming on block from the outside. Pulling does a nice job of getting the ball in a catchable position. But Souls, a guy who started 39 consecutive games, the senior, did not panic, took his downfield arm nearest the quarterback, reached across the receiver, and deflected the football. And it brings up a punting situation for Sean Terry. He's going to try to angle it for the far side, see if he can drop one inside the 10. He dropped it. Oh, did they make the save? No, nope, uh -huh. they broke the play in that yeah. time, and that's all that's necessary in college football. So it'll be Rice going to work on offense again when we return. 5:09 to go in the quarter, and no score. Drew George joins the backfield now, tucked right behind Chad Nelson, and he's going to get the call. And George got it out for about three to the 23. Hitting. It. On a second and seven. Here's a reverse for Yancey Edmonds. And he breaks into the secondary. Out across the 45 to the 47-yard line. That win finally brought him down after a 24-yard romp. The key to this play, precision ball handling. You just don't call this play with guy outside, but the pitch goes to the inside, comes back the other way. 
That's the type of precision ball handling game take an over-pursuing team out of their football game. Great call that time by David Lee, the off. And on a counter, it's Yancey Edmonds again. And he's got 12 more. Just outside the AM 40. Nelson. About a late pitch, now keeps it. And shows his speed as he got to the corner. Run out of bounds at the 33, and he got about eight and down a tree. And and free up. And a mix-up this time as flags fly in. Nelson still has the football. It, it really wasn't a mix-up, Brad. I think he was going to try to come back. And a penalty against Rice. You know, that's when you get back in the huddle when you're the quarterback and you say, guys, you know, if you're going to hold them, we shouldn't be losing play yards on when you hold them. We mean to be able to. Prior to the game, I, I was talking to everyone about Brandon Mitchell that I could talk about number 96 as being a guy that can just blow things up. But so far in this football game, it's been Pat Williams, number 99, the junior college transfer, who has been in the backfield. And, you know, you talk about assignment defense against an option team. Assignment defense for Pat Williams. Get in the backfield and make something happen. <laughs> Ray some havoc back there. Third down and long. 0 for 2 on the night. Carries a trail man. Nelson will keep it. He maybe thought a little bit too much of his speed that time because he got run down from behind by Warwick Holdman. Where the speed for AM shows up is backside. Brandon Mitchell, their great defensive end for AM, is going to come from the backside. They're not going to block him. Now, the trick is, is he fast enough to get there and catch a quarterback who's four for? Yeah, he's fast enough. <laughs> he can do it, you know? I mean, that guy can get there, and he is going to be a professional footballer. He was a tailback in high school and ran the 100 meters for his high school team. I got a feeling he was pretty fast, too. He's going to line up here as they await. That should be a pooch punt by Phillips. Nope, he's going to throw. Laying one out for Venghaus. He got a touchdown. No pooch punt there. A 37-yard touchdown pass. I really believe that this play was not designed for a touchdown, as hard as that is to believe. I think it was designed to get a interference penalty downfield. Or but maybe it was, an interception. It, yeah, or, but <laughs> it was so open that he just threw the ball into the end zone. I thought it was going to drift out of bounds, but an <laughs> over-the-shoulder catch. And the two safeties are just back there playing safe and just standing there watching the ball go. I tell you what, I'll give Tucker Phillips some credit, too. That's about a 50-yard toss into the wind. Laid it up there. Vanghaus was there for the score and that's his first touchdown reception of the year he's their leading receiver but it's the 18th pass he's caught this year first time of the end zone and Ruff in for the point after Phillips to hold right down the middle for Ruff surprise surprise that's a punter that's doing more than his job Really, Texas A&M is playing it safe, and the ball is just launched to the outside, and there is no one on this guy. The nearest guy to him, Dennis Allen, is just kind of watching, mesmerized. I think he might have even thought it was a punt. He was just watching the ball sail, and there it goes. Everybody saying, what is going on right here? To the outside, Andre Williams just watches it goes over his head, put up the scoreboard, put up seven points. Binghouse with the catch. There he is, his 18th <laughs> catch of the year, but the first time he's hauled in a touchdown. Well, if you don't have a great passing game, you just invent ways <laughs> to throw the ball. Let's go down to Doc Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, they practiced that play on Tuesday this week, and Kit Hatfield in two years here at Rice has never used it, but he used it twice, both times successfully when he was at Clemson. He actually saw that play used in a Division II and Division III football game, both times in championship games. He knew, that, as Gary said, it was designed for an interference call. But AM only has one guy back deep on short punts on the plus side of the field, so he thought they might be able to catch it and go in for six. That's exactly what they did. <laughs> That was some kind of play with 149 left in the quarter. It caps an 80 yard march, by the way, in seven plays. The big chunk, the touchdown pass from Phillips to Binghouse. I have seen that play used in pro football because they put two Hawk guys on a Hawk out there and it's going to be interference. But that's as pretty as I've ever seen one completed. It was a high short kick taken at the 24. One of the up men. Fumble. And ball loose. Rice says they have it. They do. 
Bernard lost a handle. Brent Huffman, number 34, I think is the guy who ended up on the football. And all of a sudden, Wright's going to go back on the football field with a seven-point lead. Their defense gets the rest, and they got the ball back. Bernard is going to catch his football. Come up. It wasn't an over, you know, just wasn't an overwhelming hit, but it was right on the football. Huffman's right there, scoops it up, and they got the ball at the 37-yard line again. I'm not sure who got the hit on him originally. Trying to get some help, but no one, I can't find out who it is. Oh, it's Ryan Woods, number 43, is the guy who got the hit, but Huffman, I know, got the football. So another break. Really the first break of the night, first turnover of the night. Great field position for the Owls at the 39 of AM. Nelson wants a little bit more. He's going to lob one out. And not this time. Put Tucker Phillips in there if you're going to throw. Well, that's what Ben House is going to go back and say. You know, the punter just threw me a perfect ball, Chad. Right. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I was uh, more open this time than I was last time. And Nelson knows it. <laughs> and that's why he's hanging his hat a little bit. We saw him yesterday in the coach's office coming in to watch some tape. He, he is not going to beat you with his arm, but they have to throw just enough passes to keep those secondary people from creeping up too far to keep out. And Chad Phillips is going to say, well, you got to put a little more air on it. You know, that's... <laughs> He'll be in the quarterback meetings <laughs> on Monday. Second down at 10. Yancey Edmonds on the move. Quarterback draw for Nelson going nowhere. Lost a yard, and who else? Pat Williams. Pat Williams having a great start, but Edward Jasper, number 95, the nose tackle that time, got in there and forced Nelson to change his angle. But Williams come up with another big football play, the AM front four, and they will play more four man fronts. This, there's Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator. He said against option football, I like to do a little bit more four man fronts, and I don't blitz quite as much. And when I do come, I'm coming with bump and run to the outside because I think I've got a mismatch with my corners set of the triple option offense he said Rice tries to dictate to the opponent's defense and he said we can't let them dictate to us and one way they do it is with splits but they don't dictate on third and 11 very often nope 0 for 3 on third down conversions. They're going to try to just go straight up the middle to Spencer George. And I think they were trying to get in the field goal range. They and Pat Williams. Get, uh, seven, eight yards on that play and, and, and just kind of get up inside. But I don't know if they got in quite far enough to get this. Pat, Pat Williams made the tackle. Pat Williams defeats his blocker. And you can see that time he did not get much th from Thigpen, the center, trying to double team him a little play. But Pat Williams beat them both. So this will bring out the punting team. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. kind of the same or spot the on passing, the field. Or the passing team. That's whatever. right. We're not sure. There's Tucker Phillips, the man that threw the touchdown pass. The junior out of right here in Houston. Oh, they're going to try a field goal. They're going to try a field goal. Or a fake type field goal. They put both wings to the left side on this, and last time they almost got it blocked coming across. Mike Ruff's career long is 52. This would be a 55 yard attempt if they try it. And now a timeout taken by Rice with two seconds. A delay a game, I beg your pardon. And now that takes him out of any kind of shot at a legitimate field goal here. All right, and the reason and the reason they were Delay waiting as long the as they could, Brad, is they wanted to wait to get down. the wind. And it was just out of sync enough where they couldn't get it. The clock stopped, and they're going to have to punt this ball. Now they can't kick this field goal this far. Or they're at least going to have to get into punt formation. As you see, the wind is going from right to left across your field, and they're kicking from left to right. I think I got that straight. You got it. And it brings out Phillips this time. Jamie Whitlock, the running back number 17, has lined up in that personal protector halfway. He faked a bad snap last time. Let's see what they got this time. They'll kick. Mickens is going to let it go. And Rice, can they get to it? I think so. At the one-yard line. What a great play to save that by Spencer George. But I don't know if that didn't cross the plane again, though, and that's what no, all it has okay. to do. You're right. Brent Hoffman, the guy who got the onside kick, number 34, is the guy who grabbed the ball that time. But I think it broke the plane, and that's all it has to do. The ball will be on the 20-yard line. When we come back, AM from its 20. Whistles says McElroy got the handoff. Flag prior to the snap. Randy Crystal, the referee. And it goes against Texas AM. 
Let's go back and look one more time at that uh, downed punt and what happened on the play. Huffman, as you'll notice, the technique does not step in the end zone. Now, in the NFL, this is a good play. Melton is going to catch this ball, number 87, right on the one-yard line. But in college football, it's the ball. It's not your foot. And the ball broke the plane, or at least the official said it broke the plane. Ball goes to the 20-yard line. Either way, great play by Brent Huffman. First and 15 after the penalty walked off against the Aggies. Draw play to McElroy. Slips and down he goes. He got help slipping too. Nice penetration against by the Rice front wall. Larry Thompson, one of the first there, along with Goins. And Goins is the key guy back for Rice. He is a senior. He's where their, their best defensive lineman. He missed three football games, returned to the Texas Tech game, and they're the guy that was missing up front and really one of the, the run stoppers inside that they need to have a big football game for them to beat AM. Wally Ake, the defensive coordinator for Rice, said he was the key. Getting him back made our front solidified, and he was in on that stop. Rice with the total yardage advantage. Second down 17 after a penalty and then a tackle for a loss. Bullock's going to have to pull up. Got hammered as he threw. Intended for his tight end. And boy, Corey Pollock took a lick. And it was Goins again that came in there, beat his man, got into the quarterback's face. And Pollock was very fortunate. This ball was thrown slightly high. But Goins, and it looks like a man, doesn't he, right there? He's playing like a man. Comes off, going to throw the ball, but he gets right in the face as he lets that ball and he will remember that there'll be a play later in this football game that Goins is going to have an impact on that next throw out of Katy Texas third and very long this is when AM likes to come with that slip screen to the wide receiver something very safe or very long I think they'll throw the football Sanders and Connell are the wide outs both to the top of your screen Sanders in motion they'll keep it on the ground Trying to hope it opens up for McElroy, and it does to a degree, but he doesn't get the first down. Needed 17 and got 15. Yeah, he reminds me of Garrison Hurst, the way he runs the football. I mean, explosive. He just runs in control the whole time, keeps his head up, and you see McElroy very upset. A very safe call. He's not surprised with the call, but McElroy could take a safe call and make it a home run call. Rice did their job. They forced the punt or the punt formation. I'm going to play it safe. <laughs> That's right. Sean Terry to kick. Michael Perry is going to call for the fair catch. Take it at the 24-yard line. 48-yard boot. And Rice with a touchdown lead. We'll go to work on offense after we check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc. Hey. AM will bring a blitz. And here's Yancey Edmonds out across the 30. That is not Edmonds. That's Kalon Gordon. One of the plays that I think Ken Hatfield might have just invented is an isolation play off the wishbone. You see it coming right at you. It's going to come in there. The other back comes in. He leads on the linebacker, Holdman that time, and they just come back and gash you. And that'll keep that pursuit from the backside. And they do that by taking very wide splits and making those defensive ends play a little bit out of position. Remember that one pass was out of punt formation for our only score. Second down and four. First man's going nowhere. Yeah, and that's the fullback, and that's the key man that has to be established in a wishbone, spread bone, whatever type of bone you run. you <laughs> got to have the fullback bone going up the middle, and they've not been able to do it so far in this football game. That bone was broken for a half-yard loss by Pat Williams. 12-29 left in the quarter and the half, 7-0. Don't forget, ESPN, your place at 10:30 and 50 past each and every hour, every day, 24 hours a day for all your favorite uh, teams and all the scores. And a third down at four upcoming on the 31 yard line. Still close enough to run the wishbone option. Yancey Edmonds on the move, and the pitch is to it. Yancey heads for the sticks, and he got there, and he got more. Got the corner and down the sideline. Edmonds all the way down to the 40 and inside the 40. 26 yard romp. That's his second run of over 20 yards today. There was penetration early on this play. But Edmonds is just so much quicker than you realize when he gets that football in Menhaus. Number 81 did a nice job blocking on the outside this time. Fake to the fullback. Remember, you gave it to him last time. That someone's got to tackle him. Then the outside, there's pressure from Mitchell. But the pitch, and there you see Benhouse doing a nice job blocking to the outside, and they get the turn. 
Benhouse is on the ground, getting his block just long enough on McMullen to let Edmonds turn the corner. Yancey actually stepped out of bounds at about the 44, so they back it up there. The other way. Nelson pitch, and it's a fumble. and has got it on the bounce. Scooped up by Keith Mitchell. And a and gets it back. The precision of the wishbone has to be just right because you're moving that ball from the fullback to the quarterback, and then you're looking for the pitch at the last second. This time they were a little bit out of sync. You'll see it. Give it to the fullback, and he wants to pitch wide just a bit too far that time for Gordon. The ball gets bounced around. I thought they were going to score on it. I don't know who came back and got the tackle that time. But I tell you, Michael Perry, it was number eight, Michael Perry, that got the tackle. But Keith Mitchell, I thought, was going to take it the other way. And just a little bit out of sync with that relationship between the quarterback and the halfback, that caused the turnover. So a and they're going to bring it back outside the 45-yard line because on a fumble... On a fumble in college football, you can't advance it unless it's caught in midair. He took it on a one hopper, so instead of taking it down to about the 35, they're going to bring it back outside the 45. First down, Texas a and Pulling. Pulls up, throws long for Connell, and trying to make the adjustment back there, ran into the defensive back, incomplete. Now, that's the home crowd supposedly reacted to that play, but it's really the A&M crowd, and Warwick Franklin did a beautiful job reacting to this throw, and he turned around at the last second to find the ball and really force Connell to run through him to make the catch. Franklin, a good cover man, a junior. He really is an outstanding one-on-one -on -one coverage person from the outside. And, you know, Rice is very fortunate. Really, we have four good one-on-one -on -one corners right. on this football field tonight. Second down, 10. Straight give, McElroy. And look at him dash. Leland McElroy, he's going to go. Touchdown. 45 yards. thought he was stopped. I know he was a dead stop in neutral for a couple of seconds there, and then he just turned on the Jets. I think it's Goins, number 78, that is going to have the play right here. And then he goes inside, and boom, he turns it on. Explosive? You bet he's explosive. There ain't no four twos on the other side of the field. That's a touchdown. Zero to 60 in about three seconds. I think he got it. <laughs> I think it was Izzo and Goins, two of their best football players, had a shot at him. Then McElroy just turns on the Jets, and that's why a lot of people thought this man could have won the Heisman Trophy. He was my pick preseason to win it. He just had the injury. Extra point up and good to tie the football game up just that quickly. Season-long run for Leela McElroy has tied this thing up. 11:31 left first half. Ryan Pillins has got it teed up. AM has trailed at some point in seven of its eight games this season, lone exception being LSU. So they know how to come back, and they have to tie this as Pillins kicks off. Michael Perry waits on it, takes it a yard deep, but he'll bring it out. Perry. And Perry out to the 30 yard line. 31 yard kickoff return. Made a good choice. Let's check in with Jerry Punch, Doc. There had been some concern about Leland McElroy's uh, health. Remember, he had that severe right ankle sprain against Texas Tech. He didn't play against SMU and came back against Baylor and played, but not at about 50%. Then he sprained his low back against Houston and only played one play in the second half. They held him out of practice all last week to let him get in shape. The condition that right ankle will let the swelling go down. They had him practice part speed, half speed this week. Their big concern was, could he cut? Could he finally get back to where he was at the beginning of the year and cut on that right ankle? I think he just showed him he could cut pretty well. Went half speed in practice and full speed for 45 yards and a touchdown a moment ago. Now Rice works from its 31-yard line. Nelson will keep it and paid the price as he picked up about three yards and then he was pick up, picked up and put down. Ray Mickens, their good cover corner, did a nice job. That you know, it was really funny what Mickens did. He talked to him yesterday. He says, you know, I've been lifting. I've been lifting. I've been li this is wishbone. <laughs> I don't have to cover anybody. I, I've been in the weight room. I've been lifting, and I'm ready to hit somebody. He was really an engaging kid. 
They've had some great corners come down to fight in College Station. He loomed under the guys like Patrick Bates and Kevin Smith and Aaron Glenn. And here's Nelson who backpedals to throw. He's got a man open, Edmonds, but threw it over the left shoulder, and Yancey was looking over the right yeah, shoulder. But they're going to get roughing the passer this time, I think, to the backside of that play. That'll be almost as good as the completion. Roughing the passer, and Nelson says, let's take it that way, coach. Off of the triple option, you have to have the play action pass. This time he sets up, throws the ball, and you Ooh. can see Keith Mitchell. I tell you, you get fined 12, 15,000 bucks for that in the NFL. <laughs> Ask Bryce Pop and those guys, right? You got it. Yeah, that was way too many steps, Keith. And a forearm to the head. Keith Mitchell's outside. He's uh, playing the position that Antonio Armstrong plays. He's a rush backer. He's dynamic off the edge, but that time he just took too many steps. But uh, it's early in the football game. Chad Nelson is going to remember it. So a first down right at the midfield stripe for Rice with 10.38 remaining first half. Perry but it's straight up the middle and so far they've got to keep things yeah. honest with that fullback but it isn't getting them now it is, that is a bad sign for a wishbone offense not being able to crease that fullback through that defense and that means your inside guys Thigpen, Viator, Torello and the problem there you've got two freshmen playing Viator is a true freshman a guy it's from College Station That's right. <laughs> his high school was uh, AM preparatory and uh, his dad teaches over at AM there. and he's lining up as a true freshman. And I think he's getting actually the inside three guys are getting a bit manhandled inside. Second down at 10. Edmonds is a trailer. Gets the pitch. Trying to cut back. yahtzee has got way too many white jerseys, but he broke a couple of tackles and now he's got one man to beat. Mickens trying to stay home and hey, those weights paid off. Ran him out of bounds. Good job by Ray Mickens to stay home. Not only did the weights pay off, but this is a guy that's used to playing man-to-man -man coverage defense. And Edmonds comes out. But I'll tell you, the penetration, Nelson is going to have to bounce it out a little bit wider than he wants to. Nowhere to run this football. You see the great lateral pursuit from that wrecking crew defense. And then when Edmonds turns to the other side, number 24, Mickens is going to play a little man-to-man -man defense. Give him a few shakes. I've seen it all at wide receiver. But <laughs> I think he might have got a little bit of a face mask. At least the Rice Benz was pointing that out, that it was a face mask. But it was a really perfect job of staying at home and being the last guy on that change of field direction play for a corner. Two-time All-Southwest Conference performer showed it on that play. Now Rice is going to have to take a timeout as they had some indecision about their offensive group out there. Tie game, 7-7. Time, Rice and Texas A&M deadlocked at 7. And Rice finds itself right now with a third down and eight coming up at the AM 48 yard line. Third down has not been great to them tonight. And this normally would be a passing situation for most offenses. Nelson does want to throw, and he throws it a mile over the head of his intended receiver, Darius Wilmington. Well, that's one of those calls that when you're the third and long, you're not a passing team. You go out there and you say, okay, Chad, third and long, we're going to try to throw a first down play. But if he's not open, throw it away. Now you go, oh, coach, thanks, man. I'm going to run out here, and if I, <laughs> if I hit him, it's good. If I don't hit him, I'm going to be on the bench over here getting yelled at. So I'm going to make sure I throw this one a little high. That one got all the way to the A&M bench before <laughs> it landed. Punt's not the worst thing that could happen for the Rice football team right now. Ten minutes, almost ten minutes left in the half. It's still 7-7. On the offense. The penalty's been refused. We'll be playing fourth down. That we will. That'll bring out Tucker Phillips and the Rice punting unit. Here's the guy, if you just joined us, who threw a 37-yard touchdown pass earlier. That doesn't show up on his punting stats, but it'll sure show up in the box score. A 37-yard pass from punt formation made it about a 55-yard yep. throw. Into the wind and right on the money. Mickens back deep. And that's at 10 men up all night. Now they drop back to return it. Kick hangs up there and goes out of bounds. Let's see where they're going to spot it. That's the second punt that's blown from the midfield to the near sideline right out of bounds. Put a big curve on it. Right there, 12 yard line is where it curved out. Coming up on Sunday. Okay, we got part of one. <laughs> 
And it'll be Texas A&M offensively on its own 12-yard line. Leland McElroy has been their offense tonight. That's been about it. He'll get the call here and get dropped for about a three-yard loss. And Britton Goins, we can see why the coaches are happy to have him back. He did, but another guy that made a play was Thomas Binford starting his first game as a true freshman, number 55, just hit that isolation right in the mouth in the backfield that time. He can fly. And defensive coordinator Wally Ake said he is going to be a great football player. This is a guy that finished second in his high school class, 3.96 grade point average. And he did a lot of studying on that one right there because <laughs> he, sure he was in the backfield before the fullback even got started. Well, when AM snaps it here, the plays will be even. The scoreboard's even at seven. Pulling. Throws on the run, incomplete. Intended out there for Albert Connell, incomplete. And Pollock have to pick himself up again. A little interesting with the Thursday night football game when we visited with R.C. Slocum, his strategy, or actually his game plan for how he got his players into this football game. Remember, he had an off week last week, and his team went to school this morning. They had class. They had classes till 12 o'clock, and then they had a bus. They bust in here today. And uh, I kind of questioned it a bit. One question I asked him is, would you do that if you were playing Texas? And I, I'm still waiting for that answer. <laughs> <laughs> he said yes. He did it. Be true. Right. Third down at 12. McElroy. Oh, he got held up at the line. Nice penetration again. Joe Davis that time. And only about a yard pickup. Joe Davis says, we're doing it, fans. We're doing it. Davis was a Buckus nominee earlier in this football. He's, he's really not quite 100%. He's been bothered by an ankle, but uh, he has coming on. He's gets as healthy as he's been all year. So, and uh, you can see with that play that he read the play perfectly and hit it in the mouth again. And now Sean Terry has got a kick from, as you can see, the blue of the end zone. Got a nice punt, though. Michael Perry camps out of it at the 43 and has a chance to return. And Perry, nice job. We got about 13 on the return and into AM land at the 45 yard line. Michael Perry's another true freshman on this football player. Had a big game against Texas in his first play, the ability to play the game, and he's been fielding all the punts so far. Speaking of fielding things and speaking of punts, we thought we were going to have a punt from Rice. As you look at Tucker Phillips from behind, he says, okay, whoop, got a guy open. And out the Van House for the touchdown. And then it was Leland McElroy. Thought he was going to be brought down, and then he hit overdrive and said goodbye for the score. And we're all tied at seven. At the 45-yard line. Rice with an opportunity here in a &M territory. And they go to the first man. And for the first time tonight, Jamie Whitlock, the fullback, is able to get positive yardage down to the 39-yard line. That will be positive for the option game. That win made the tackle their freshman inside linebacker, but the first time they've been able to crease that A&M front four with the fullback, and that's what they really need to do. They need to get that fullback established so they can run the option outside. Whitlock's got five touchdowns this year. And that time was dragging A&M bodies with him for a six-yard game. And that's pretty stingy. That's good for sixth in the country. Second and four. Here comes that counter. And it opened up in a hurry for Kalon Gordon. And he got a first down inside the 35. Jerry? Guys, they just ran over their freshman left guard, Mike Vieter. You mentioned he is from Texas A&M's hometown of College Station with the A&M Consolidated High School. His father is a professor at Texas A&M, and you wonder why he wasn't recruited there. Well, they didn't question his strength. He was a district, all-district shot put and discus thrower, but they questioned his height. He's only about 5'11", and A&M said, you got to be about 6'2", to play offensive line for us. They said once he got in there and started mixing it up and they got that five-man front that they wanted, things have started to work for them offensively. This time, not much for Perry as he got about a yard. And Rice has been banged up this year. And uh, inside Cooley, their uh, guy that they thought was an all-Southwest Conference type guard, yeah, is Chris one of the injured the guys that uh, it brought Vieter in there. Chris Cooley is the guy. He's a three-time Southwest Conference player, and he, they were really depending on him this for this year and he has not been able to play all year as he tore a tricep tendon has not been able to do it he tried to come back and uh, win again and he's out for the season we're under six and a half minutes in the quarter second down of ten Rice 
as you see the clock winding down gets it right at the final moment Nelson fake to everybody but he's not going to fake out a and M he's going to get run out of bounds by McMullen from his safety position Tyfo McMullen the strong safety did a really nice job of reading his keys and staying with the quarterback two fakes on that play they faked the fullback then faked that ISO counter back and Nelson tried to get outside they're trying to establish an outside running game and really have not been able to do it except for that one time a pitch to the outside and then that one reverse play where they pitch it to Edmonds I would think a defensive player playing against this kind of offense has to have his eyes about as open as they can get to keep their eye on where the ball is and really what A&M has been doing so well is getting penetration inside their two defensive tackles Jasper and Williams have been doing the job inside they've been getting the penetration and keeping that option from getting started there's been the killer all night for Rice so far even though they're tied up in this game third and long third down and 11. Gordon in motion Nelson quarterback draw all the way not enough of a draw though only got it to the 33 maybe the 32 yard line that win and Warwick Holdman the two inside linebackers make the hit yeah but no, notice where they ran that play right to the middle of the field and this time they're going to have the wind to their back that win Freshman linebacker who's really coming on in this football team, making a lot of play, just a playmaker, lost a lot of weight to get ready to play on this football team, came in a bit heavy. Phil Bennett says he got in shape and just started making plays. He beat out a good football player, Trent Driver, and he's in there starting now. Mike Ruff's going to try a long field goal with the win. Here's his career long, as we mentioned earlier, 52 from 50 this time. And he got it. Nope, it came up short. Dropped in front of the crossbar. It was straight enough, just not long enough. Mike says, man, that was close. Tucker Phillips says, don't worry, I'll show you how to throw a touchdown pass a little <laughs> later. Five minutes, 26 seconds remaining in the half. We're still tied at seven because they didn't quite have enough. I had one by McElroy, and then the as we talked about the long pass out of punt formation, the passing game for AM just has not been clicking. They want to be balanced, but it's hard to call passing plays. Pulling has missed his last four throws, and he's just three for nine. And you've got that explosive running back. It's hard to dial up a passing play when you're throwing a lot of incompletes. You've got the two tight ends set in there as they have 526 to work before intermission. Goins almost jumped offside. McElroy trying to get outside. Rice can't get him until he gets to the corner. And he gets out to the 39. Or Franklin ran him out of bounds. Picked up six. Beg your pardon, he got eight as he's run out. And almost a 100 yard night already for Leland. Well, Leland McElroy. How about being a Heisman Trophy candidate when this is the first season you've ever started? Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy, huh? The last two years, he's backed up Rodney Thomas and Greg Hill. And I asked him, I says, that give you a lot of confidence watching those guys play in the NFL? He said, yes. <laughs> Didn't really take him very long either, did it? Averaging over seven a carry tonight. Second down along two. Long handoff to McElroy. Dropped in the backfield, and it's Thomas Benford again, the freshman that Gary's been talking about all night. They've inserted this guy in because he just can flat out fly. Very intelligent football player. Sees the opening, just gets into the backfield, tackles him back there. A true freshman football player. Only about 200 pounds right now, but he's going to grow into being one of the best football players in the South, well, not Southwest, in the WAC no. Conference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you caught yourself. Yeah, as a sophomore, he'll be in the WAC next year. Right. Out of Lomar, Texas. Third down at six now for AM. Bulling play action. Got some pressure, goes left side, and overshot his intended receiver, Hayward Clay. Tight end was out there and had a step on his man, but it's incomplete, and it's time to punt for the Aggies. Corey Pullock really never was able to set his feet. Just enough of a push inside, and he didn't feel comfortable going to the strong side of the formation. Came back to the to the tight end and really had to throw that ball safely to the outside. And the tight end was not able to catch up with it. Third time, three and out tonight for the Aggies. So Michael Perry will await Sean Terry's punt. This one more of a line drive. Perry will field it at the 25. Whoops! Went over his own man. Oh, nice tackle by his own guy down there. And that was Ovalace. 
who <laughs> got in his way. Now, not going to even get credit for that one. Nope. Either. Coming up Saturday, college football on the deuce on ESPN. Dr. Jerry Punch from Rice Stadium, where we're tied up. And the Owls at home take over in their own 26. And again, no gain on this one. It's probably Pat Williams off the bottom of the pile. Well, we have to look sometimes. That's a good way to just guess because he has been handling the inside runs all day. See this huge split they have right here. That is very big. They're going to try to run right back into that split. But Pat Williams is going to have anything to do it. He's just defeating his man one on one gets into the backfield and David Maxwell excuse me number 98 made the tackle that time. Pat Williams we've been falling in love with him so much we think he makes every tackle. <laughs> Second down 10. As you look behind the option of the Owls, Nelson play action and wants to throw. Goes outside. Mangos got out there and he got a play on the ball, but incomplete, broken up. As that one hung out there a while, and Andre Williams was able to come up and make the hit. Chad Nelson 0 for 4 throwing the football. Van House is going to come in. He's been cracking all day. Going to come inside. This time they've got him bracketed. They smelled the pass play that time. And Williams and McMullen do a good job of getting the bracket. The ball was thrown in the only spot he could for Chad Nelson. But Van House could not come up with the catch. And again, it's third and ten. For a wishbone team, this is just death. 334 left in the half. And they're averaging third and eight for the game. That's why they're one for seven. Inside, they got about a yard. That's it. And it was Jamie Whitlock. Brandon Mitchell made the tackle. Time to punt for Rice. And you can hear the reaction from the crowd. Again, this is Rice Stadium, but it's really an AM crowd. Fourth time, it's been three and kick for the Owls, and Tucker Phillips will drop back in punt formation. Ray Mickens way down on the other end. Averaging over 12 per punt return coming into this one. Phillips is going to throw again. A man wide open again. He's got a first down this time and maybe more. Kevin Bravo will take it down to the 46 yard line. Are you kidding me? That thing worked twice. This one's good for 27 and a first down. Well, he's the best passer on the team. You might as well let him throw the football. I mean, you fake the ball from your own 27 yard line. It's going to work. I mean, I, I don't care who you're playing against. People do not expect you to, to fake the ball in your own end zone like this. It's easy pitch and catch. It's just, can he catch it? Raven catches the ball, turns up field. They got a first down. But if you're willing to gamble when you're backed up like that, you're going to be successful. Tucker Phillips, 64 <laughs> yards and a touchdown and perfect. Yeah, if he's not careful, they're going to put him in there and make him run the option. <laughs> So it's a first down at the NF 46. In the counter, Yancey Edmonds bounces down to the 42. Got about four. Warwick Holman made the tackle. And Warwick Holman. Yancey's had a nice night so far tonight. One of the things David Lee, the offensive coordinator for Rice, said, just because somebody puts their hands on you doesn't mean you're tackled. You get hit, you keep running, and Yancey Edmonds did a good job that time of picking up three or four extra yards when he could have been stopped for two. And with 2.15 left in the half, they'll bring it up to the AM 42 yard line. Nelson on the pitch. And Edmonds got close, but he's about two yards short of the first down. Warwick Holman and Andre Williams made the tackle as we check in with Chris Fowler. Chris. Thanks, Brad. A reminder at halftime, we'll have baseball news. A new skipper made, a, a name that a major award handed out. Also, hidden video, our little slice of the wild and wacky. And Corso and James play bowl committee chairman as we look at the controversial alliance. So stick around. Can't wait till those guys dissect that thing. That's coming up in about a minute and a half. Rice just one time out left. Third down and two for the Owls. Big one here. They're going to try to get more points before the break. And they've got the first down. Down to the 30 flies Jamie Whitlock. And you can see the difference when you're in a position third and two, three, four, when you have the option to run that fullback when the wishbone offense is going to work. That's when you can get in there and make first downs. They probably would have gone for it on fourth down. That's when the offense work. It's been first and second down has been killing this Rice offense so far in the football game. 
Down to the 30 yard line. And the clock running. They're going to want to hustle in and out of that huddle. And look for AM now to try to get in there and play some blitzing man to man coverage. No wide outs here. Two tight ends set. And here comes the blitz. Gordon. And he got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Keith Mitchell, the outside backer that time, just did a great job coming off the block. And that's one of the things that the coaches. Dave West said it's so good about this A&M defense. They just get off blocks. We have to hit them quick because they just don't stay blocked long. Rice out of timeouts now. They take their final one with 49 seconds left in a tie game before halftime. 37, one good for 27. Here's the drive. Started for the Owls at their own 26-yard line. And Rice is a bit confused even with the timeout this time. They send a lonely end way out to the left side. Gordon in motion. Nelson, quarterback draw. Uh -uh. Brandon Mitchell. Loss of about three. Now you got to think about getting at least another try for a field goal here. You're going to run the foot. They really can't even run the ball. They really should take some clock here. Now is oh, going to take time out? Is an oh, injured man. AM's got a man down at the 30. And it's Warwick Holdman. See, they're, they're really in a little bit of a bind here because they'd like to run the ball, Ricewood, and pick up a few yards to kick a field goal, but then they're going to have to rush their field goal team on the field because they can't down the ball. It'll be fourth down. You can't just ground it to stop the clock. This injury, though, should give them a timeout to get their whole kicking team together around. I think that's the deal right and, now around it, Hatfield. There's will, two different huddles going on And it right would now. be. What I would do is I would run the ball and then run your kicking team on to get the chance at the field goal because you cannot ground the ball. It's one of the things that I've seen quarterbacks make mistakes you can run up there and ground the ball on fourth down the other defense says thank you coming up at halftime which is 32 seconds of Oldman the redshirt freshman being helped off the field we'll try to get word from uh, Jerry if not the before this half ends sometime early in the third quarter Larry Walker will come in to take his spot Larry Walker was the starter for this football team when the right. season ended and a returning starter on the football team so Holdman beat out a good football player. So third down at 13 for Rice. Let's see if they do what we think they might do. Watch number 17. I think he'll get the ball. And that's Whitlock. They're just going to down it. Boy, I don't, I don't understand yeah, that one. I don't either. I think they had plenty of time. They have 30. Well, now the scoreboard clock says seven seconds. Now, oh, we had I, 32 I, up there a minute I, ago. I see. The, the, the play clock started again. Now, what Rice needed to do was get up there under the ball and start right away. They let it run down. Actually, they just had no other choice now to kick the field goal. So Mike Ruff, who missed by about two feet on his last attempt. Tucker Phillips will hold. This, this one is longer. About a yard longer. A 50-yard field goal attempt. This one's going to be short also. Ruff. Comes up short. It bounces right on the R in the end zone as the half comes to a close. So two long field goals that Mike Ruff's had a chance at. R.C. Slocum's Aggies come back from being down seven to tie it up at intermission. 7-7 seven, seven from Rice Stadium as we send it back to the gang. Chris Fowler, guys. <laughs> All right, Brad. 45 of those 66 yards going this way on that one play when he actually made a couple guys from Rice miss on that play he made it all on his own and as Phillips limbers up his legs I don't know why <laughs> I should be throwing <laughs> yeah, he's down on the sideline getting ready and we're gonna look at the stats and, and really what stands out is the total yards for Rice 180 yards remember 64 of those was from the punt formation and 45 of the yards for A&M came in one play neither offense has been able to get underway with their offensive and that's why we're stalled here. 7-7 seven, seven as Rice gets up, or the Phillips, excuse me, gets up from stretching his leg. And there's his numbers. <laughs> and that is a passing efficiency rating that's probably tops in the country, right? <laughs> Not enough to qualify. Mike Ruff to kick. And Leland McElroy is back deep. And watch out for him as two years ago, he went coast to coast twice against the same Rice team on kickoff returns for touchdowns of 93 and 88 yards. First time he'll be able to touch it tonight, though, as a kickoff return. Uh, and they're keeping it away. I don't think so. They're going to pooch yeah. it again. Down to the 22-yard line. Yeah, last time they fumbled in that same spot. Out to the 37 goes Bernard. And down to the field we go to Jerry Punch, Doc. 
Guys here in the AM locker, a and locker room at halftime, what a surprise. The first team they called together, the punt return team. Special teams coach Sean Slocum came up here and diagrammed it basically who the eligible receivers were on this board and said, I want you to see everybody who's eligible to catch a pass because they're not going to fake one in the second half. The good news is R.C. Slocum thinks that maybe the defense playing awfully well, but the offense can take advantage of that eight and nine man front. Maybe get some single coverage, take advantage of the corners, play in single or man coverage outside and throw the ball. Three for ten, he was not happy in the first half. The bad news for AM was the fact that their freshman linebacker, Warwick Holdman, well, just a moment ago, he walked in the shower behind me. He will not play the second half. Severely sprained right ankle. Uh, looks Brett? like they have lost another linebacker as well as the guy I think that's down on the field is Chris Colin, a backup linebacker injured. No, it's Parker, excuse me. Down on the kick return team and got caught in that pileup. The six yard line. First down, and in. First play, offensively, the second half. Sanders in motion. Oleg's going to come up, fire it. Got it out. Connell. And Connell to the 42. Just a quick pass, but good for about five or six yards in front of Warwick Franklin. And maybe it'll get Paul again uh, some sort of rhythm. Well, I like the call. You know, you got a quarterback that went three for ten in the first half. You know to win this football game, Corey's going to have to come on with his passing. So you show the confidence in him early. You set up some deep balls, and you let him get a pitch and catch. The only gamble of that one is if you don't complete it, and he completed it. Second down, a short five. With Rice and Texas A&M tied at seven. Here comes a blitz. McElroy ran right by it and has a first down. Leland out to the 49. Give him seven more and give him over 100 for the night. The goal for the Rice defense was to stop the inside running game. So far in this football game, you can see they have not accomplished their goal. But it does appear to me, though, that McElroy has had to earn his yards. Remember, yep. he had a big draw when it was uh, third and about 20 that they gave him about 15 yards. And, of course, that one between the tackles was a 45-yard gain when it was defense pretty well. So it hasn't been easy for a and and I think Rice is very happy with their defense. Leland with a buck and a quarter tonight, 125 on the ground. Here early in the third quarter. And whistle stop play and going stops McElroy. Yeah, but the, 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 and he went just a bit too long. He's going to draw a delay of game penalty as the 25 second clock ran down. Now, if you're Leela McElroy, you're going, I had to take that right, shot. That, that wasn't fair. <laughs> Man. I think Leland kind of, you know, kind of fell with the punch that time, kind of took the punch, and it really didn't look as bad. But you know, looking at his face, doesn't seem real happy about it, does he? I may have said Leland had 125 on the night. The team has 125 on the night. He's closing on 100, though. First down at 15 now, back at the 44-yard line. And a very good screening football team. Let's see if they can come with a screen and get McElroy some room and some space. Sanders in motion. Draw play. McElroy got by the first wave, but not the second wave. Good open field tackle, short of the original line of scrimmage. And it was Davis, again, who helps out on the stop. Jerry? Guys at halftime spoke with uh, Rice head coach Ken Hatfield. He was pretty pleased with the defense play in the first half, but very concerned about the lack of penetration by their fullback inside on the offense. And we're going to change our blocking schemes up front, and we've got to get some penetration. And, Gary, if the fullback belly series doesn't work, the other two options aren't very good either. <laughs> it's the way I learned it when I ran the wishbone. As you did so well. Second well, I, down and 12. I did. <laughs> Pollard pressured, got it to McElroy. Nice open field tackle. Joe Davis again. Senior out of Arcola, Texas. And he's been all over the field tonight, and he shows the kind of form they expected from him early in the season before injury slowed him down. Well, you know, Jerry mentioned that the AM coaches said that Rice has been giving him a lot of man to man coverage. I have not seen that. It has looked like a lot of zone coverage to me as see Goins put pressure inside. I don't think they're gambling a lot. They haven't used a lot of eight man fronts if you really watch it from upstairs. They've been sitting in some good zones. They do not fear the passing game, so they're trying to play it honest, and McElroy is limping off off the field. Remember the bad ankle. And he kind of pushes everybody back as if to say, out of my way. Third down and nine. And it's pulling in a shotgun set. Three wide receiver group. And again, they whistle it dead. 
Now there's the face of a frustrated quarterback. This time someone moved, just flinched up front, just enough to back it up. Going to make it third and about 14, and RC's going, this, the, the halftime speech just didn't work the way I thought it was going to go. <laughs> At least not so far. Five penalties on Texas A&M, and four of them have been on the offense. So as Gary said, third and 14, and Pollock two of four in third down situations. Zone defense, three-man rush for Rice. Izzo's going to be the fourth man if he comes. He does not. Pressure on Pollock. Flags down. We're going to hold and call. Andy goes down for a loss. Andy Clifton just exploded in there from his defensive end spot. Andy Clifton was not even projected to be a starter for this team. He beat room in that time inside and had to get a hold on it on top, and I'm sure they'll decline it. But coming from the left side of the screen, you're going to see Clifton is going to get just inside. There you see the hold right there. That's the hold on the play. Pulling is not able to get away from it. A hold and a sack on the same play, and I'm sure it will be declined. And Rice is going to get the football back. On the offense, the penalties refused. Fourth down. Enter Sean Terry to punt. He's been a lot busier than he was hoping for tonight. I know that. This backing his up, fifth kick. Backing up Leland McElroy are two true freshmen, Sir Parker and DeAndre Hardiman. And Parker went down on that kick return. That's had right. to be you know, limping off. So we'll wait and see about Leland McElroy. Michael Perry. Doesn't take the fair catch. I thought he was going to put the hand up. Well, it was, the... was kind of half fair that time. Yeah. He kind of just waved, kind of chicken hawked <laughs> at that time. Well, Leland McElroy with a big night, but in question now as to whether or not he'll be back in. Tie game, 11 12 in the third. <laughs> I, I, what does that say? AM on ESPN. Oh, that's an A. a that's an A. ATM. ATM, yeah. okay. You think about it as, uh, of course, automatic teller machine. Well, yeah, for, with for your wealth. <laughs> AM digs in. Rice at the 30 yard line offensively. 11-12 to go in the third quarter. And maybe a yard for Yancey Edmonds. Inside penetration. This time it's Edward Jasper, the nose tackle, is going to make the play. They have not been able to stop the inside play. Number 95 middle this time comes right off the block that time by Vieter. And, and the, the young freshman has not been able to handle, to handle the strength and quickness in the AM line. Well, that's a load up there. Williams about 280 and Jasper about 290. And Brandon Mitchell about 280 on the other side. Second down nine. Nancy Edmonds on the move. Nelson waited too long and down he goes. And it's Pat Williams who's having a career night. And it'll bring up third down and a mile as we check in with Dr. Jerry Punch on uh, Leland McElroy's injury. Doc. Guys, A&M head trainer Carl Kapchinski told me with a grimace a moment ago that it's the same ankle that McElroy had injured back against Texas Tech. He rolled it on the field, came off limping. He's here on the base trying to walk it off. Will he go back in? You better believe it. They took him back in the ball game three different times against Texas Tech. They carried him off twice, but he wouldn't stay on the sideline. They got to time in the base. He didn't go back in and play. His teammates around him. Sanders telling him, you got to get back in there, man. Third down, 13. Williams has six tackles. It seems like 16 tonight. Nelson rolls and keeps it himself. Oof. That was a wicked hit. I think it was Dent Win, the freshman, just plays inside out. This was a run all the way off the bootleg. Right but now, Nelson saying, Who dat? Yeah, Who dat did win this time. <laughs> Fumble the snap a bit, comes outside. But Chad Nelson's going to try to turn up. And when he turns up, he runs in to number nine. Number nine. Number nine. <laughs> <laughs> Win with a big hit yeah. forces a punt. The bad news is it's punt formation. The good news is it's punt formation. And this for is us. about the spot that they threw from, from for a 27 yard gain in the first half. Phillips kicks this one. Mickens is going to wait. Going to take it on the hop or not, right? Nope. Going to let it go. And it goes all the way down to the 23 yard line. 50 yard punt with the roll. And with 8.59 remaining in the third quarter, we're still deadlocked here at Rice Stadium. First down for Texas A&M from its own 23-yard line. 
DeAndre Hardiman, the freshman in there now for Leland McElroy. Pulling. Play action on the bootleg, throws out, and across the 30 goes Detron Smith. Ball loose. Big scramble. Rice says they have it. I think they do. And as we welcome John Makovic up to the booth, John, exactly what AM didn't need is for another turnover to give it back to a fired up Rice team. So that's right. This is the third different attack they've used passing. They started the game looking for the big plays, and that didn't work. And then they were looking for the short throws to start, and this was a bootleg. And of course, uh, it's a lot of times you get the completion, but a big stick by the Rice team, and uh, they created a second turnover for them. It was Andy Clifton again who had the sack before, came from behind, forced it loose, and Britton Goins is the guy who fell on it, and Goins and Clifton making plays, and the, the field is turned upside down again, Brad. And turnovers, now a and put it on the ground twice. Here's a big break for the Owls offensively at the Aggie 31. And dragging tacklers with him is Jamie Whitlock, 14 yards straight up the middle, and Coach, uh, what they haven't been able to establish too well is that fullback straight up the middle that worked that time. So I call this a water torture offense. <laughs> they just drip, 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 and before you realize it, there's some gashing holes in there. This is the first real run they've had up the middle that looks like it had a chance to go. It's exactly what the coaches have told us, is that if they just keep beating it in there, even if it doesn't gain a lot on uh, several plays, when it finally opens up, it opens up the whole triple option. And now they get a first down in the red zone. Just outside the 17-yard line. Nelson waits late pitch. Edmonds and knocked out of bounds. Short gain. Coach, it does appear that the AM speed from their interior defensive line is forcing and bouncing that option a little bit too wide. They can't turn the corner. Yeah, AM clearly has an advantage team speed-wise, both on offense and defense. Of course, we saw it with uh, Leela McElroy breaking that run in the first half. But defensively, it's very difficult for Rice to get outside on the option. That's why they went to those little counter plays to, to slow them down and also get them going with misdirection. Second down and nine. Owls try to capitalize on the turnover. Nelson will keep it, and he found an opening. It closed in a hurry as Andre Williams came up from the secondary to make the stop. The standings in the Southwest Conference, John Makovic's Longhorns of Texas are atop the heap right there at 3-0. and And, Coach, everybody's talking about the big game December 2nd against A&M. They better take care of business tonight or it won't be as big. No, we both have a lot of business to take care of. We have three games before that when, of course, A&M has two others. So there's still a lot of football to be played. And we're playing well now. We're happy about it. I'm surprised this game is as close as it is, as it is though. Kind of a strange scene here, Coach. It's Rice Stadium, but 80% of the crowd are A&M fans. So I've been there before, Gary, under those same circumstances. Third down and five, a huge one. Are they going to run out of time? They got the playoff. Nelson keeps it. Flags are down. Maybe they did run out of time, and the flag came in late as Nelson goes down for what would be a first down, but again, a penalty marker on the play. A&M has to be careful. They're a blitz team, and they like to go after teams, but... They have not blitzed very much tonight, although that was one situation there. I think they brought an extra linebacker up to the line of scrimmage. Coach, you know, when you defense this Rice team, did you have to make many changes in your defense for a different style of offense, or did you just play what got you there? It, well, I tell you, Gary, we had to be so careful that we didn't leave somebody uncovered when we had the option. Whenever you have an option, you have to put somebody on the fullback, somebody on the quarterback, and somebody on the pitch. And you have to repeat it over and over. And of course, what, what Rice is looking for is a mistake by somebody in that defensive unit. So far, AM has had very few mistakes against it. And here's the one soft spot in the triple option, as far as I'm concerned. When you end up third down and nine or ten, it's third and ten right here. And now they're gonna have to take a timeout. So Chad Nelson says, uh, I was running out of timeout. It was down to one second again on the huddle clock, and that's what got him in the situation they're in, which is third and long. John Makovic will stay with us. We'll let the rest of you take a break with 6.49 left third quarter. And we're tied up at seven apiece. This is along with us, and we have a third and ten for the Rice Owls. There's what they've done in the red zone this year. They're going to have to earn all of this third down. Nelson will keep it. Weaves his way inside. Nelson's got a first and goal. 
Johnny's what? a slippery little quarterback. Oh, what a good call because you're you're expecting pass, so the the line is coming on a hard rush, and of course those aren't coming are headed for the option, figuring that you'll go outside, and that's a great counter play. This is really like a counter play for a triple option team. And you can see the quarterback, Nelson, sees the over-pursuit to the outside, and he's got that quick start, 4-4 speed, kind of like the guy you're playing with down there at Texas also right now. So James Brown runs like that, but uh, this Chad Nelson is really giving him a different team. Chad got about a half a yard and got pasted that time as he was just going to take that snap and uh, make it a long quarterback sneak, he hoped. Coach, speaking of a different team, has it changed your philosophy at all, the success James Brown's had within your offense, of the type of quarterback you're going to recruit in the future? Are you going to go on a guy that runs with the ball? Uh, Gary, I'll tell you what, if we can find real good athletes who like to play a pro-style offense, we'll always look for that. But we'll look for a pro-style quarterback first because that really is our offense. Second down and goal at the four-yard line. Under six minutes to go third quarter. Rice trying to capitalize on a fumble recovery. Nelson, late pitch, loose ball. Edmonds got it on one hopper. That was dangerous. He maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage. That could have been disaster. Again, inside penetration by the defensive tackles. Nelson has to take a couple steps back, and he got hit just as he let go of the ball. You'll see the penetration come inside, forcing Nelson to go wide. It was Keith Williams, number 40, 23, Keith Mitchell, excuse me, and Edmonds was able to get the ball. Yeah, A&M said enough of this. We're coming after you. That was a yeah, play. that's right. That and Nelson got hit right on the arm or the left elbow that time, and he's hurting. And now it's third and goal. Michael Perry brought the play in from the bench. The seventh play of this drive. Nelson keeps it, shouldn't have. Goes down at the five, he lost a yard, and it's Trent Driver, the inside linebacker. Highly recruited kid, John, Trent Driver. Yes, he's a good player, and of course, uh, they have some good young linebackers. That wins the one who's made the most plays in the last month for them. He's come on and become an outstanding linebacker for them. So the field goal unit comes on. Kind of tough when the, you, you start your preseason, the strength of your football team. As you look at Nelson Goff, he is hurting. I think it's his arm that got hurt. Was supposed to be your linebackers, and two freshmen beat out your two starters from the year before. Tucker Phillips to hold. Mike Ruff will try a 22-yard field goal. And after kind of a rough night with two long misses, he connects there to give Rice the lead. But as Gary said, the Isles quarterback is shaken up. I don't know where they go from here if Nelson cannot play with Josh LaRocca out. They do not have experience at quarterback. They got another true freshman, Tillman, Tillman yeah. Raphael Tillman, that's going to have to play. And his offense, according to David Lee, is very limited. He hasn't had much practice time. Uh, I would think that they'd have to make the major decisions on what they would do. But the good thing about their offense is they don't have to rely on the forward pass. And they can run that ball and run the option and make things happen with that. Well, not the way they can throw from punt formation, they don't. <laughs> well, that's, it's time for Tucker Phillips to make another appearance. <laughs> He's perfect tonight. You see Tillman, though, strapping it up and getting set to warm up. Makovic for taking time out on his night to uh, join us. The 11th-ranked Longhorns. It's the highest ranking they've had at this stage of the season in five years. And here's Sir Parker, who's shaken up on the last kick return. This time he takes it and... I think a penalty down at the 40-yard line. Looks to be a marker as he got out across that 40. And let's see what the flag's about. Might negate a nice uh, return of a short kick. Again, they do not want it. Kick deep to Leland McElroy, who's back out there, bad wheel and all. It's a holding call against AM. So instead of great field position, they're going to back this thing up down closer to the 20-yard line. Coming up tomorrow night. Not pitches is about all they're going to call on him to do. Corey Pollock, who has not had a very good night. Play action. Gets it out in the flat. Nice broken tackle by the tight end, Hayward Clay. And as John Makovic pointed out, this is the third time, the third series that they've started on first down with a pass in this half. You can see the AM coaching staff, Steve Evans, or the offensive coordinator, and R.C. Klosokum knows they have to open up this football game. I'd like to see him put the ball deep a couple times. They need to open up the zones, throw the ball down the middle of the field on a post pass. They just cannot keep picking to the outside of the defense. They need to throw the ball downfield. Could it be? 
Another upset. Long way to go. But the third quarter is down to the four minute mark. Second down and three. Bullock is four for four this half. So Corey's tried to pull it together since halftime. Leland McElroy back in there. Jerry said it at the time to the bench to keep him out of the lineup. And he's going to get a first down run out across the 35 to the 37. Coming up later, we'll be selecting our Wrangler players of the game. This guy obviously is going to be under consideration. And so is this kid. Tough little rascal. And he is uh, not anywhere near what they list him at, which is 5'11", 185, because we stood next to him yesterday. And if he's 5'11", I'm Andre the Giant. <laughs> You know, in running the wishbone offense, there's an advantage to being smaller. And I, I think as you see his pad, that's a pad for when you pitch the ball, you get hit in the stomach a lot. First down, Aggies. Bullock rolls out. Ooh, diving attempt to try to sack him. Boy, is that yeah, Izzo That was there? Izzo. The guy plays all out every play. Larry Izzo, put a cape on him. This looks like Dean Kane right here on uh, the new adventures of <laughs> Superman. Watch this thing coming in here. Roll out to the outside. They're trying to open up the defense. Dun, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news for Izzo, he might have played like Superman. Yeah, but he doesn't get to Lois Lane. That's the yeah, only crowd. No right? Terry Hatcher. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> it brings up second down and ten. Seven tackles tonight for Izzo. From the 37. Fourth first down pass this half. Give to McElroy. Trying to weave his way, and he does. Boy, he can find the openings in there. He got it out to the 44 yard line. Let's check in with the good doctor. Jerry, what do you got? Guys, a moment ago, you saw Alan Egger, the rice head trainer, talking to Chad Nelson. And a concern about Nelson was his left shoulder. He actually took a helmet right on the end of the clavicle of the collarbone. He's been trying to warm up pitching the ball, but when he grabs the ball and pitches the option, he grimaces considerably with that left arm. I asked him, say he's going to go back in the ball game. The coach said, You better believe he's going back in. He's chewing the ice. He'd like to chew up the A&M defense right now. It's 10-7 Rice trying to pull an upset at home. Third down and three for A&M. Bullock whips it out. Kyle on a wide out screen and he lost the ball at the end of the play. They yeah. whistle it dead I believe. He was down that time. At the 49 he'll have a first down. Trying to stretch it out. Put his arm out there. But the body went down at the 49. It'll be good for a first down. He made a heck of a catch just to scoop that one off the turf. And you can see the speed that he had that time after he caught the ball. Faked McElroy one way. Turn around. Throw the ball out on the option right there. Had only one guy to block. Couldn't go this way. There's somebody. So he tried to get back inside. And Jeff Sowles is the guy who's going to end up making the play and making the tackle on it. Albert Connell, part of the Junior College National Championship last year out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Played for Trinity Valley Community College. Then went unbeaten at 12-0. He was a big reason why. First down from the 49 for the Aggies. McElroy. Got a blocker in front and used him well. Leland McElroy on a bad wheel all the way to the 31 yard line. Got about 20 more. 21 before Larry Izzo could get back there and knock him off his pin. Well, if that's a bad wheel, I want those on my car. I'll tell you, <laughs> he can still turn it. Calvin Collins, number 54, is the guy that's going to pull and get in front of it this time. And McElroy has nice patience, sets up the block to the outside, and takes it inside. You can see he does not have the breakaway speed that he had earlier in the game, but still good enough football speed to play and make a big play on the counter to the outside. Chrome wheels and white letter tires there, 133 and a touchdown. First down, and in. Trying the other way. Off tackle. Down to the 26. About four more before Thomas Benford could make the hit. Leland is only 20 hours short of graduation with a business degree. He's done great in school, College Station. And obviously, with that in mind and the fact that he is capable of going to the National Football League at the end of the season. That is something that he'll have to sit down with uh, his folks and his older brother. And of course he said Coach Slocum will have a major input as to whether or not he comes back next year. True eight man front this time on second medium. Pollock plenty of time. He's going to air one out down the sideline. Kyle made the adjustment for the touchdown. And that 
that's what you have to do occasionally. You just have to put the ball up in the air. Your receiver, Shaw, Ladafa Shaw, had good coverage. The ball was thrown slightly short, and Connell jumps over, makes the catch for the touchdown. And that's when that turf comes up. Because Albert Connell is the guy that's down. Fade to the outside. Shaw was in a bail technique. It was not to the outside. And as this ball comes down, you see it's perfect position right there. Who's going to win it on this one when you do it? And as it goes forward, you see Connell adjusts to the ball better than Shaw and gets the touchdown. Connell uses this 41-inch vertical leap. He used a lot of it right there and then came down on the ball as he hit what is a very hard surface, to be quite honest with you. And this turf will be replaced at the end of this season. Not soon enough for Connell. No, though. not quick <laughs> enough for Albert. He's going, why couldn't they put that in last week? Would have been good. You know, Shaw had did a perfect six-yard touchdown. And now the extra points up and good. And so we seesaw back and forth with the lead changing hands here in the third quarter. And Corey comes over to his wide receiver who made the catch with 106 left third quarter. 14-10 Aggies now. Jerry? Guys, guys, the good news about Albert Connell just got the breath knocked out of him, so fortunately he'll be able to come back in. But you're exactly right. This turf is very, very hard, and he fell directly on the football and then couldn't get a deep breath. There is no more a desperate feeling than the ability to not to be able to breathe, and uh, they let him lay there for a little bit. He'll be back in probably next offensive series. All right, Jerry, thank you. R.C. Slocum's club back in the lead. Coming up on Sunday night. On down the field. Taken at the 17 yard line. And out across the 25 goes Rod Newhouse. Familiar name to Southwest Conference fans. Chad Nelson. We got another flag down on the play, though. Nelson ready to go. Still adjusting his gear there, making a final check of uh, his shoulder pad strap. And Rice is saying it's holding against them on their kick return team. See if Randy Crystal uh, agrees. Absolutely. That'll back it up inside the 15 yard line. So the field position is going to suffer on this one. So now which which way do you go if you got a bad left shoulder you know you can't pitch to the left but if you run to the right you're going to get hit right on that yeah. bad left shoulder. You, <laughs> not much else you can call. Chad Nelson 0 for 5 passing but remember coming into this game he had only completed six passes all year. And we'll take another look at what shook Chad Nelson up in the first place. Coming from the outside this time, from the corner, he was hit just as he let that ball go by the corner. Andre Williams on a corner blitz. Got his helmet right under that left shoulder pad. And there's the guy that would take his spot if necessary. This is the worst starting field position of the night for Rice, just outside its own 15. <laughs> Fullback got nothing. Brandon Mitchell is there. So is Pat Williams. Well, he, is. he had a game. He was not a starter at the beginning of the year, but he's come on strong and making a lot of plays. Freelances a bit, but he's still a good football player. Starting to get a feel for this Texas A&M defense. 14 to 10, our score in the waning moments of the third quarter. And as you see some scores come in, don't forget ESPN, your place for scores at 10, 30, and 50 past Every hour, every day, 24 hours a day. And what might be the final play of the quarter, if it's on the ground, which everything has been tonight for Rice. Nelson, late pitch, Yancey Edmonds. Yancey cuts back inside, and he got a first down. I thought he was going to be knocked out of bounds, and then he move inside, and Dennis Allen bumped him out, but not before he got 15 yards. Yancey Edmonds is about the exact size you need to be for that pitch back. Option coming right at you this time. Fake to the fullback, slide your foot forward, get to the pitch man, go inside, force him to tackle you. Perfect pitch. Edmonds going upfield when he catches it. Makes one man miss. Gets a first down. Yahtzee's best season was 93 when he almost put 1,000 yards on the board. 941 that year. He's got 95 yards and 11 carries tonight. Got him a first down last time. This time the fullback does get a little bit of breathing room. Three or four yard pickup for Spencer George. Yeah, I think Chad Nelson wanted the ball, but Spencer George took it. <laughs> and he took it to the end of the third quarter as well. We played three at Rice Stadium. And the Owls on the short end now by four, but they're hanging tough with the 18th ranked team in the country.
been regained by Texas A&M on that touchdown pass pulling to Connell and now Rice will try to have to answer offensively second down at five full back first down Spencer George goes across the 40 to the 42 as we check in with Dr. Jerry Punch Doc guys there have been some ferocious members of the wrecking crew over the years names like Quentin Coriot Ray Childress Kevin Smith Johnny Hoff and others but uh, one name you may want to remember for the future is that of Dat Wynn he is a redshirt freshman who's already beaten the odds somewhat you see his family were among the last to leave Saigon he's a he's a Vietnamese refugee and tonight his mother for the first time ever will see him play in an Aggie uniform she is in attendance here in the upper deck that's great and he's had a good game of the 43 maybe a yard inside on the fullback and the Wynn family in attendance and I'll tell you what when they were recruiting her son trust me blue chip linebacker loses a lot in the translation if you don't speak English <laughs> she they couldn't were. believe that you could get your full college education paid for playing football said, I like this game yeah, I like this a lot hey, you know when Sean Slocum went to his school the very first day you were allowed to visit in person December 1st he showed up and there was Gary Moeller two Michigan assistants there was a Notre Dame assistant all waiting to talk to that win it came down to Michigan and A&M in the end Nelson drops back scrambling around now down he goes. I would say Pat Williams because it's Pat Williams. She doesn't, mom, even mom know, she, doesn't, fact. she doesn't even know when to clap. That's how little she knows about football. Well, that wasn't part of that sack, but he was running around chasing the quarterback, and now Nelson <laughs> yeah. says, man, this thing is hurting. That's it for, I think, Nelson. He's going to be out of this football game. You can even see when he starts to scramble, he turns up, and he's a little bit afraid of getting hit right here. He knows it's coming. He tries to duck it, but Williams comes in, drives him into the ground one more time. Chad and I down. think uh, Chad Nelson is going to be out for the football. I don't like to guess, but that one looked bad. It's nope. almost when he tried to brace himself, it ended up being worse. Right. Well, you know, Pat Williams, really interesting football player, never played with his hand down in junior college, came here, was an outside linebacker, came for the first time with his hand down. He's really coming on for this football team, as you can tell from the game tonight. And he's playing opposite one of the best defensive linemen in film and on tape that I've seen, Brandon Mitchell. So they really got two bookends there. Well, of course, the dilemma for any coach is having to use up a redshirt season you don't ever want to use a freshman like Raphael Tillman that's going to have to be the case because there's the starting guy Josh LaRocca the senior who had a nice season going until the broken foot ended his season and his career there's Chad Nelson the sophomore out of Louisville Texas who's played gallantly tonight and throughout the season has done a great job as a ground gainer and now here is Ken Hatfield having to say all right young man <laughs> time for you to take center stage. This well, is Raphael Tillman. Here he comes. Well, Raphael Tillman really has no choice but to go in a football game. You know, the heck with the retro. You've got to go on the field. They don't either that or the coach is going to have to play <laughs> exactly. right now. There's nobody left. Tillman, 5'10", 165, and uh, he, they have to get him started off slowly. I look for maybe a, cut, a play where he hands off the fullback or a count or something very simple early in the football game to get him down. It's third and 15. They're not likely to make it anyway. And they're trying to break the huddle, but their quarterback is still down. So timeout on the field with 13 minutes and 34 seconds. Nope, can't use Tucker Phillips, the quarterback. Sorry. <laughs> Your number three, and a true freshman, Rafael Tillman. First snap he's going to take in the games right here from the 36 and third down in a mile, third and 17. And they just go up the middle and get a couple. And Spencer George brought down by Brandon Mitchell. And let's go to Jerry Punch, Doc. Let me show you on Tom here what happened to Chad Nelson. This is the left side of the shoulder. This is the AC joint. This is the, the clavicle and the acromion. A is the acromion and C is the clavicle. Right here is where they thought he has a separation, but he's also very tender when you palpate over the end or press on the end of the clavicle. They're concerned it may be a minor fracture. They're going to take him in and get an x-ray, and they'll let us know, and we'll let you know. Tucker Phillips, meanwhile, set to punt. And he's been so used to throwing it tonight that he... Almost forgot how to kick it, but he got a great roll. Boy, this takes the bounce of all time. Tucker Phillips off the side of his foot, and it goes down inside the tent. I don't know if he's allowed to play the lotto, but I'd go buy something. I right would, now. too. I'd, I'd play six, pick six or something for this kid. Lotto, Texas. Tucker Phillips would be right in the groove with that. So he gets a 52-yard punt, but it rolled about 25. And don't forget, ESPN Sports Center will be coming up on A&M. Has to work offensively. Leland McElroy, the single setback. They're up by 
by four. With Twelve and a half to go, and Leland looking for a place to go down. Lost a couple yards. Izzo doesn't get credit for the tackle, but he made the first hit. Larry Izzo that time beat Howard Clay, the big tight end, that time inside on his block. You can see it right here. Here's Izzo. He's going to come right inside the tight end that time and get inside McElroy before he can get started. Izzo, not in a great position before the snap, but beats him inside. That was almost a sucker play by a senior player. Lined up outside, takes it inside. Great job by Izzo. I can see why they say this guy just plays great every week. Yep. He does. Wally Yakes said, you know, he doesn't say much, but he doesn't have to. His teammates rally around number 26. Out of the Woodlands, Texas. Bullock takes the pitch and wants to go deep on the sideline. Aaron Oliver, an over-the-shoulder job. Got a first down of AM out from deep in their own end, a 29-yard pass play. Well, Corey Bullock, you can see with the passing, is starting to get a feel for his passing game. This guy's going to come inside out and down the sideline by Oliver right there the inside slot man Pollock has plenty of time no one in his face to hit Oliver down the sideline and this is a perfectly thrown football he only had about a yard and a half to drop it inside the hat and he did it beautifully and Aaron Oliver did a nice job of just staying there and not putting the hands up until the last instant so the corner couldn't break it up Pollock's had a great second half after a shaky first two quarters with a McElroy now in the corner bumped out of bounds as he got in to Rice territory at the 49, Bobby Dixon ran him out of bounds, but he got 14 more. You can see McElroy is still favoring that ankle as he runs, but he's just such a great football player. They've got to keep him in the game. Remember, two, red, two true freshmen behind him. He's going to follow Collins again, big number 54, and McElroy's coming to the outside. I'll bet you if he was healthy 100%, he would have taken on Oliver that time, Dixon, excuse me, that time and turned it up. But when you're not 100%, you run for the sideline. And even minus 100%, 150 yard nights is not too bad, is it? He is fun to watch. First down at the 48 for the Aggies. He'll come the left side again. And he got about 10 more. Run out of bounds. And very close to a first down. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. You want to know how unselfish Leland McElroy is? Well, he's a fourth-year junior, and when his during his redshirt year, he's a redshirt junior. During his redshirt year in 1992, they were 12 and 0, and were going to the Cotton Bowl. He was third string behind Greg Hill and Rodney Thomas. Now, when they went to play in the Cotton Bowl, they had to suspend Greg Hill because of that summer job in propriety. R.C. Slocum came to the young man and said, "Hey, we're going to have to play Notre Dame with one tailback, Rodney Thomas. If we need you." Will you give up the year and come out and play? And Leland said, Coach, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'm a team player. He didn't play the whole year, but he would have played in the Cotton Bowl. They didn't need him, as it turned out, but he would have given up an entire redshirt year back in 92 if he'd been asked. Well, he had a lot of input from his oldest brother, Lee, who played at UCLA, and he's the athletic director at Cal State Sacramento, and he talked to his oldest brother about it, and he says, what do you think? And his brother said, hey, man, it's not the Leland McElroy Aggies. It's a Texas A&M right. Aggies. You do it for the team, and he took that advice. Well, it's hard to be selfish when you've got 11 brothers and sisters. That's right. Too. You get what you can get. <laughs> you got, you do what you say. You eat when they tell you to eat. <laughs> his older brother, Reggie, uh, played at West Texas State, a heck of a player, and has been around the National Football League now with several teams. I think he's with the Broncos right now. So uh, a football family. The passing game for AM. Steve Engineer giving credit. The coordinators called the pass game. It's opened up everything for this football team. Second down and less than a yard. Bullock will do it himself. Straight ahead for the first. And so they'll move the sticks as the clock, after they move the chains, will wind its way under 11 minutes before the next snap. Hey guys, you're talking about McElroy's family. Some of the coaches were chuckling a little bit. You said he got an older brother as an athletic director. Well, he can tell him what how to deal with the agents. He's got one brother who plays in the NFL with the Broncos. He can tell him what the fair market value is. He's got one brother, Carl, who's a minister in Dallas. He can pray. He gets a great job. So uh, huh. they said he's got it all wrapped up in the family. I don't know if Reggie will ever make as much money as Leland will at the next level. I don't think so. Connell has a grab, and he picked up eight or nine. Albert Connell and Pat Williams are two junior college players that have come into AM 
Connell is just getting comfortable with the offense. That's the tough part of being a junior college transfer. By the time you're really understanding what to do, it's already into your senior season. Nice miss that time, making Bobby Dixon miss to the outside. And inside, Binford comes and makes the tackle. But now his speed, and he's got great speed, is starting to take effect because he can play to the speed. He knows what he's doing. Got nine on the reception, second down on the yard. Ball at the 28-yard line of Rice. They've got to come up with a stop. They trail by four. McElroy weaves his way through traffic, flags down. McElroy down the sideline. Leland's got it first and goal, but there's a penalty marker back near the 20-yard line. Yeah, I got bad news for you, uh, Mac Leland. You got a hold on that play, and I know that ankle's bothering you, and you're you're gutting it out, and you're showing a lot tonight, but it's going to be called back. And it negates a 24-yard romp around the left side again for Leland McElroy. And he says, I think I need a breather. <laughs> Izzo is a guy who gets it to the outside. I don't really see the hole. There's right the there. hole right there, coming from right there. The hand on the back. That's what the referee sees. And Aaron. when McElroy cuts inside, you see a handful of jersey that time. Chris Sanders. Outside, Chris Sanders gets the hold. And you see, even when you're hurt as a running back, Leland is going to duck under those hits. It's when you're hurt out there, you feel everything. So he goes out, and DeAndre Hardeman will come in and take his spot in the AM backfield. DeAndre Hardeman, true freshman, is the second leading rusher on this football team. He's carried the ball 51 times. And they've got a bright future with two young running backs to take the place. Should Lila go pro? And that seventh penalty tonight against the Aggies hurts them. Instead of first and goal, it's back at the 29. And Pollock just takes it down to the 25, maybe the 24 yard line on his own. First down. Kind of bumped into his guard and then bounced it out himself. What a young football team this AM football team is. They've got nine true freshmen on the two deep on their offense, and they're very young up front. They've got three sophomores, a junior, and only one senior starting in the offensive line. So, bright future. They just got to come up with a quarterback. And remember, Brandon Stewart, the transfer from Tennessee, got beat out by Peyton Manning down at Tennessee. He's being redshirted this year at AM, so he's a possibility here from now. He's got the coaches sort of licking their chops about his potential. From the 24, first down. Blitz coming by Izzo from the backside. Can he track down McElroy? Yes. That's a long run against a fast guy, but he hung in there. Yeah, but credit into a Kalu that, that time. Number one is the guy that forced McElroy back to Izzo. Number one right there. You see him. He's the guy that forces him back. McElroy's forced back this way, and there's Izzo to make the tackle. Here comes Izzo from the backside. Nowhere to go for McElroy force right back to Izzo. Now, Izzo, you're a great player, but you're not going to catch Leland McElroy from behind unless there's somebody there to help you. Actually, McElroy's been tackled for a loss seven times tonight. DeAndre Hardeman now takes his spot in the backfield on second and 18. And he'll get the call. Straight ahead. Ran over Izzo almost. Yeah, but very impressive play that time for AM because they got it in the field goal range. And this game is only a four-point game. That could make it a seven-point game. Very important eight or nine yards he gained. So it's going to bring up third down and about ten. They needed to get that ball in the field goal range, and that was a good job. Now they've got a shot of going getting the first down, and if not, they've got the ability to kick the points. There's the time remaining. We approach eight minutes from Rice Stadium. 14 to 10, Texas A&M leading. And a third down and 10 for R.C. Slocum's Aggies at the 24-yard line. Both wideouts to the bottom of your screen. And now Sanders in motion. They'll keep it on the ground. Hardeman dropped by Sowles, who came from the secondary and made a big play. Jeff Sowles, that's the eighth man up this time. He's the strong safety. When you try to run into that eight-man front, there's the guy right there that's going to come inside a stent. Kalu to the outside, Sowles inside. That's a little stub fill by that strong safety, and they ran right into the heart of the defense. So Kyle Bryant comes out, and he missed from 37 earlier. And as we said, the Texas A&M kicking game expected to be one of their bright spots this year, and it has not been. From the right hash, he'll try from 40. Try to give AM a seven point advantage. 
Looks like he got all of that one. Right down there to give Texas A&M another three. Seven minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the ball game. A&M in front by seven thanks to Kyle Bryant's field goal. Tough year after a good season a year ago and he just came up with a big 40 yarder. Well, you know, you never feel part of a team when you're a kicker and you're missing them. You, yeah. you know you don't do much but kick and you like to make them. Hillens will kick off. Perry will track it down at the one. Michael Perry going to try to go the other way. And only got out to the 12-yard line. Nice kick coverage as Quentin Brown made the stop on the special teams for AM. You know, throughout the season, America Honda. Second straight start for Rice inside its own 20. And here's George. Spencer George, nice run by the fullback, the first man through. He got about 13 out across the 25. Rafael Tillman running the show at quarterback, Jerry, because of Chad Nelson's injury. What do you have on that? Well, guys, uh, pretty good news from the Rice locker room. They, they tell us it is not a fracture. They think it's a first-degree separation of the shoulder, the left shoulder we showed you a moment ago. There are three different degrees. First degree is the least severe, but not necessarily the least painful. All right. Tillman is going to have to. Well, the one thing, as Gary mentioned earlier, you don't have to worry about putting the ball up a lot. No, and, but I think, you know, you got to go to win the game now. You only got six minutes. They're going to have to run the option. They just can't give it to the fullback every play. That's what's going to happen. You know, you got six minutes to go. You're down by seven. Uh, you know, you're just going to have to gamble a bit. I don't think a and is going to take a lot of chances offensively unless Rice shows that they can move the football now. That win made that stop for about a half yard loss, as a matter of fact. Ken Hatfield, who made his first season at Rice a successful one with a co-championship last year. And here's his freshman quarterback facing a second and ten as we approach six minutes remaining in the game. A touchdown down. Tillman, late pitch to Edmonds. A good one it was. Edmonds going to have to try to spin for what he can get. Ray Mickens dropped him at the 30. Ray Mickens is showing me a lot. Now, on, on film, I saw him cover well and do a good job one-on-one -on -one outside. But those are tough tackles for a corner. And I, I'll tell you, the pro scouts will watch that as much as good cover because there's not a lot of guys up at the next level that can tackle like that playing out at the corner. Not a big guy, but he plays a lot bigger than he is. Rice is doing what they do well, rushing the football. It's the most that the a and defense has given up all season long, as we told you earlier. The Aggies defense sixth in the country against the rush. Well, when you face a team that rushes and rushes and rushes some more, that's going to inflate a little bit. Third and six. Tillman wants to throw. Going to have to throw it away. Just too much pressure. And that time it was Brandon Mitchell who applied it. But Tillman was trying to run away from those big guys, and they were running as fast as he was. He said, now, I don't remember this in high school. <laughs> I used to be able to just run away from these guys. I'm going to start the play action for the left side this time. Stops it right there. Looks downfield. Go there. you got nowhere to go. He's going to scramble out to the outside. Gets out to the backside. Nowhere to run away from. Let's just toss it out and punt the football. And Brandon Mitchell forces the punt, and that means Tucker Phillips will come on. Six kicks already and a couple of huge passes. One for a touchdown. That opened our score. Aggies have the return on for Ray Mickens. Really hasn't had much of a chance as a punt returner tonight, and he's going to clear everybody out of the way here, too. Doesn't want any part of it. And he'll let it roll down to the 30 yard line. So AM's got the lead, and they've got the clock on their side as well. Up by seven with less than five to go. 55 seconds remaining in the football game from Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas. Rice down by a touchdown to Texas A&M. And Larry is going on that mouthpiece. He wants a piece of somebody else. He's been in on a lot of stops tonight, and his defense will have to force another stop if Rice is to have a chance. Well, 455 seems like a lot if you have a pass offense, but with a wishbone offensive team, I think Rice needs a three and out right now if they're going to have a chance to get back and score a touchdown against A&M. Aggies on their own 30. Leland McElroy, and we got about three as we check in with Jerry Punch. 
Guys, I just spoke with Rice Orthopedist Tom Clanton, and the news wasn't quite as good as we had hoped on Chad Nelson. They've come back and corrected the diagnosis, and actually they've measured the separation and is now being gauged as a third degree, the most severe shoulder separation you could have. They measure it by how much these two bones here separate. Just the partial separation is first, on top of each other second, and completely apart is third degree. That could require surgery. They still haven't decided. Well, they got a freshman quarterback now if they do get the ball back that they'll have to lean on. Second and seven. McElroy got the corner, got around Goins. Collision in the secondary with Jeff Sowles. I don't know who won that, but uh, short of the first down is McElroy. And now a huge third and about two is coming up. Huge Leland, for both teams. Absolutely. Leland McElroy that time was able to get around the corner because Detron Smith, his fullback, was able to put Kaloon out of the thing. Here's Kalu to the outside right there. He's the guy that ends up getting the block, and Smith, 44, pushes him out of the play. Became Kalu and Cream with that one. You got it. Yep. Third down of the couple. Rice thinking about a blitz. Pollock taking his time, and he's going to take a timeout. Tried to maybe draw him off a little bit with a different count. He takes a timeout to talk to Coach Slocum. We'll take a timeout as well with 3.28 left in the game. Love to make a tackle here on third down and two. I'm going to run a lot of sneaks in this situation. Give it to your main player, but he didn't get it. And it was Joe Davis, the middle linebacker, who made the hit. Goal line defense that time for Rice. They took it on head on. McElroy tried to turn the corner in isolation play. And he got stuffed, and they're going to get the ball back in time to make a serious drive at this game. And remember, now it'll be four down territory no matter where they get the ball for Rice, and that changes the game when you're running wishbone offense. Hey, what they would love to get is for Michael Perry to be able to shag one from Sean Terry here and do something with it. There he is. He could help them tremendously if they could get some decent field position. Well, they came after Terry. And Perry now will feel it at the 22. And here he comes. Michael Perry. He did get a nice return of about 13. Another huge day of college. Dad Nelson out of the lineup has done. It has taken uh, so many options, it appears, away from the Rice offense. Spencer George maybe got a yard. Second and nine coming up. The problem for Rice now, they, the fullback has been taken away again by that inside defensive tackle tandem for AM, and now the option is going to be very difficult to run outside. Second and nine. Both fullbacks in the game. Blitz coming from AM. Tillman, whoops, not a good pitch. Somehow the fullback, Whitlock, fielded it. Now he's thinking about going deep. Are you kidding me? Well, that was the changeup with both fullbacks in the game. You can see Whitlock is probably their only back that could throw the ball well. He was an all Sun Coast. Well, here's another look. Right there, the ball is free right here, and Whitlock is very lucky to get this football as Keith Mitchell came from the outside pulls away once pulls away twice and he says you know what I got a guy deep I'm just going to heave it it worked for Phillips early in the football game that house is deep the ball lands safely on the field Whitlock the back side that's the guy that made the play as Tillman really misjudged his pitch and Whitlock saved the day for, for Rice as he comes back and gets it we've had some strange ones Whitlock in high school threw for almost a thousand yards and 15 touchdowns as a quarterback as a senior so they were going to put it in his hands and let him do something with it here's Raphael Tillman wants to throw back a screen the other way George has got a couple of blockers I think he's got a first down out to the 46 but only 139 left they'll stop the clock to move the chains they needed that one. And Brandon Mitchell has gone down for AM. Is he's either cramped or something? Yeah, you can see it as he pulls his back his foot. He's cramped up a bit. We've got a minute and 39 to play. And can you believe this stat? Yeah, for the game now, that's the first quarterback completion of the game for Rice. One for seven from the quarterbacks. And of course, they're two for two from their punter and 0 for one from their fullback. That's spreading it out. That is. Giving everybody a chance to throw. Of course, Josh LaRocca right there, the guy who can't throw. 
was on the sideline with crutches. It's got to be tough, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll make you hang your head. And so they work on. Have not have the quarterbacks. As you look at some of the quarterbacks that have come through the Southwest Conference, I mean, the only guy, Tommy Kramer, up here has made an impact in the National Football League. You know, Kubiak, Carlson, Tolliver, where all guys that played, but only one of them, Tommy Kramer, that was nearly 20 years ago, has been able to make an impact in the National Football League. This was a running conference for years. We said in the football offices to the uh, secretaries and the assistants yesterday, said, who's the most famous player ever to come out of Rice? And without a question, <laughs> Tommy <laughs> Kramer. First down. Tommy's not here. So Rafael Tillman will try to have to do it. And he's in trouble again. And he's going to get sacked. That's the last thing you want to happen. Dat wins on the bottom of that pile. Dat Wynn really made a name for himself at AM on the scout team. Nobody could block him when he blitzed, so they said, let's put him in there. Let's try him on our regular team. He just got in there, had an injury to driver. Wynn gets in the football game, can't get him off the field. Timeout with 1.14 left. Rice running out of chances. And Spencer George, the fullback, breaks into the secondary. As the coaches said, even when it doesn't work, you just got to keep pounding that fullback. I don't think I would have thought a fullback was going to go 21 yards no. with a minute to play. I have to admit, I was surprised that he had the football as I was. Warwick Dung had the football on the last play <laughs> against Florida State against Virginia. You think it's going outside with the option? Never forget the fullback in wishbone offense. Spencer George has really come on in this football game in the second half. And Mickens has to get the push outside to get him out there. And remember, they need eight points to win. And I'm sure Hackett, Hackfield is ready to go for two. Tillman drops back and throws for Perry. They can't quite get there. Incomplete near the 20-yard line. Excuse me, that's Bridges, not Perry. That's Thad Bridges, the wide receiver. Number nine, Thad Bridges. Sports Center in about a minute. A minute of football time, that is. That'll be coming up immediately following our action from Rice Stadium. 17 to 10, Texas A&M, the 18th ranked team in the country, trying to hold on for dear life. Rice upset-minded, and they're 40 yards away from either. Trying to tie things up, as Gary said, trying to win it. The fullback took it right away from Mitchell, and he lost two yards. That time, George looked like he almost grabbed it right out of the hands of the quarterback. Ken Hatfield says, come on, let's hurry up. Get up there and call another play. That's exactly right. And Spencer George has been hot, and that occasionally happens with a fullback that's hot. He thinks he can run the ball again and grabs it from the quarterback. Third down and long. Tillman. And he goes down, and it's Brandon Mitchell. He just put a cramp in the Rice offense with that one. Yep. And I think Rice is going to have to call a timeout here, their last of the game. And it's fourth down and last chance, fourth and 15. And we got a time to take a look at our Wrangler players of the game for tonight from Texas A&M. Leland McElroy, even not 100%, he is sensational to watch. 168 yards and a touchdown. And from Rice, this guy. If you could put 11 guys like him on defense, you'd have some, wouldn't you? Larry Izzo. In on two tackles for loss, 11 tackles overall, and he's their career leader in tackles for loss at Rice. You got to give honorable mention uh, though, to a putter, don't you? Phillips, he, he was the offense, and it's fourth down at 15, and right now Phillips is saying, I think I got the best shot of picking this thing up for us. But two passes completed tonight for 64 yards, including a touchdown, and he putted very, very well as on the night averaged over 44 a kick. So if you're the Rice offense right now, trying to come up with a play that can pick up 15 yards, fourth down, Dave Lee is going to say, I think they just have to throw the ball up and try to put it up for grabs right now. Problem is, we were kidding around about Tucker Phillips. Rice is two for two on fourth down conversions tonight. Yeah, but the quarterback's on the bench, Phillips. The putter is the guy that connected on both of them. And there is a coach trying to get his team up to the line of scrimmage. Last chance for Rice, fourth and 15. Tillman throws in the middle of the field, tipped and intercepted. Reggie Brown got the interception, McMullen the tip, and Rice's upset hopes will fade with 23 seconds to play. 
Nice show down on the field as everybody from that defense for Rice goes out and slaps helmets for their offensive team as they come off. There's a congratulations for their quarterback, Tillman, as they know they were out man. Typho McMullen that time made the play. Interception by Reggie Brown, but uh, boy, I thought Rice showed a lot in this football game, hanging in there with their number three quarterback, and uh, they gave it everything they had, one last pass, and I really thought the teammates, that defense going on the field and congratulating each other really showed what type of football team Rice is here. Well, a series that began back in 1920 comes to a close tonight. That win, part of it. Texas A&M next up for them Middle Tennessee State then TCU and then a big one against Texas on December 2nd tonight they survive a scare from the Owls of Rice and the final winds down Texas A&M 17 and Rice 10 stay tuned for Sports Centers coming up next for Gary Danielson the punch doctor and our entire ESPN crew I'm Brad Nessler saying good night from Houston Texas again the final store the 18th ranked Aggies of Texas A&M 17 the Owls of Rice 10.